Hey guys, before we get started, right quick, I wanted to let you know I recorded this on the fly with just a phone. Had an opportunity to do some port around and I figured here's a chance to answer some of your questions in the comments. So, I hope you guys enjoy. Here we go. What's up DIY Nation? Welcome back to UFloor, the channel bringing you tips and tricks to help you with your next flooring project. Now today I'm going to be doing a quarter round video and this is going to be my third quarter round video. And the reason I'm doing it is because I like to try to answer as many questions in the comments as I can. Even, even though I keep getting the same question, uh, I'm going to try to explain it today like you're five years old. No, I don't want to offend anybody, but for some reason when I say inside corner and outside corner, that's where I lose you and it's just blowing my mind that I'm actually losing you at that point. So let's just go over what an inside corner and an outside corner is. I feel like it should be self-explanatory, but it just doesn't. So here we go. Taking a look at this setup right here. Right there is going to be an inside corner. Does that make sense? Right there is an outside corner. And the reason I say that is because that goes in and this sticks out. Okay, so now when we're measuring, I like to measure from here to there. When I'm writing it down on my piece of paper, what I'm going to write down is RT. RT stands for return. A return is going to go right here. And what is a return? A return is just a cut that we make so that the end looks like it's finished. You don't just want to dob it off and have raw wood there. You want to kind of make it look pretty. And there's a different kind of return where you can take two pieces and put them together. I'll show you that if, if, if that's something you're wanting to do. In fact, go to my quarter round pro tips video and I'll show you how to make those style of returns in that video. But for this purpose of the video today, I'm just trying to show you what is an inside, what is an outside, how do I write short and long. What does all that mean? All right. so. I'm writing a return right here, RT. I'm gonna go ahead and get my measurement. And it's two inches. Now watch how I write this down. Two inches, okay? That is from return to the long. Now I know based on comments and questions in the video I've made, some of you have lost already. See, what is long? I don't, I don't understand what's long. I'm gonna go cut it and then I'm gonna show you, all right? So let me just go ahead and write the rest of my measurements down. I'll go down and I'll cut them and I'll come back and explain what's long, what's short, what's inside, what's outside, and how does it all work. All right, here we go. Again, we're going from left to right. Somebody match. And I'm going 17 and three quarters. All right, guys, check it out. I cut a couple pieces here so that I can explain to you what is what. Okay, this right here is going to be a return and we will write a return now. On the other side, as you can see, it already has, it's a tiny piece, but there is a return there, and that's because it's buttoned up against that. That corner right there is what I would call an inside corner. I hope that makes sense. This is an outside corner, so look at this. When I take these two pieces right here, and I put them together, I mean, let's, let's try to use a little bit of common sense. Where's that going? I mean, is that gonna go like that? Does that look right to you guys? You see, it doesn't look right. It can't be right. It has to be this way. That's what forms an outside corner. Does that make sense? And in order to get an outside corner, when we're measuring, our blade generally is going to touch the short point first. When we come down, our blade is going to touch the short point first and leave the long point out here, okay? This would go in that way, and this would go in that way, okay? And that would make an inside corner. Again, this is an outside corner. Just like that, okay? Now, when we're going to call whatever we're going to call the pieces, when I'm measuring, I'm going to say from left to right. I like to write my numbers down from left to right. That way, if I'm the measure guy and there's a guy down on the saw cutting and he looks at it, he'll be able to know which side has the long point, which side has the short point based on how I wrote it down because I write it down like you would read a book from left to right. This measurement we know was 17 and three quarters, correct? And let's take a look at that again. But in this wall, 17 and three quarters tells me that on the left side, 
I'm going to need a long, right, one of these. And that's gonna to have to go into the corner like that, okay? And on the right side, I'm gonna need one of these. And that's gonna tell me that I need the short point. Remember, we don't wanna say long to long because that would give us one of these on the outside. It has to be long to short. Does that make sense? So measuring this one, when I write it down on my piece of paper, this mark right here, this edge, is where I need my short point to be, just like that. Does that make sense? See, the line, the straight line, when I roll it up, that's where it needs to be. So when I'm writing it down on my piece of paper, I'm gonna write it like this. 17 and three quarters from long to short. If you are just starting out and you can't grasp that, then you can write I and O. That stands for inside corner and outside corner. Just know this is the part you're gonna to measure to, okay? Some people are asking me when I put this out here, z do I measure from here to out here? Come on, man. How in the world are you going to do that? Let's make life easy on ourselves, okay? Also, I did want to mention, I'm not always cutting my angles on 45 degrees. My inside corners are cut on a 44 degree and my outside corners are cut on a 46 degree about 95% of the time. And if you want to know why, go watch my video on how to install quarter round like a pro. I explain everything in there. I just wanted to throw that tip at you. So now that I got that measurement, I'm going to go measure the other side so that you guys can see where I'm measuring to and where I'm stopping at. And I'm going to go cut these so that you can see how I cut them. All right, let's go. Now, I'm gonna butt this part over here where my return goes. I'm gonna have a return over here. And I'm gonna go to, where at guys? Where am I measuring to? Somebody in the comments. Somebody holler at me. Where, where do I wanna measure this to? Don't, don't wanna. Don't wanna butt this right here and then try to measure it out to the outside over here on this big long. No, we measure ours to the inside, whatever's touching the wall, all right? Wrong, wrong, correct, wrong. Right, correct, right, right? And then we put our other piece in, look at that, boom, it comes in, it makes a little nice little corner for us, just like that, right? So we wanna measure from here to our short point. Short point, or outside corner. So this number right here, butting that, it's 29 and a 16th. Can you see that? 29 and a 16th. So, how am I gonna write that down on my paper? Am I gonna write down from short to return, or am I gonna write down from return to short? Am I gonna write down long to return? Common sense again, we're reading it like the book. So our outside corner or our short point will be written down first. Does that make sense? Short. Z. Where did that stop at? It stopped at 29 and a 16th. 29 and a 16th. And then over here was a return. Alright, so I'm gonna show you how to cut a return. We're gonna go cut these three pieces of we're gonna go cut these three pieces of quarter round. We can come back and stick them in there and we'll explain. And I'm also gonna cut some on a 45 so you can see the difference in why I cut them on 45 and 46 or 44 and 45. All right. All right, guys, we're out here. We got some quarter round. I think I got enough here to actually do everything that we need. Uh, I'm gonna save that for my big one there. All right, and we're just gonna start with one of these right here. I think I can probably get the first two pieces out of one. Okay, the very first piece, return. So what I'm gonna do is start with my first thing, which is a return. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that return. How do you cut a return? This is how I do it. I cut it straight. And now I wanna angle it on a 45 degree. You can do 45, 46, 40, I don't care. It, nobody's gonna be able to tell with this little bitty tiny cut. I come down, now here's how you know where to come down. When your baseboard runs into the, the casing, there's a little tiny reveal that usually takes place, and that's somewhere about an eighth of an inch. So that's about where I cut mine so that it sticks in there and it comes out flush. You can cut it like that and eyeball it and go, ah, I'm take a little more off. You would just slide it that way a little bit more. And then you 
to make your return however big you want it to be. You see what I'm saying? So there we go. Our first number now. Two inches from return to long. The saw, I am not going to put it on a 44 degrees. I mean a 45 degrees. I'm actually going to come back to 44 degrees right there and lock that thing down. Okay? Now, let's measure our two inches. This is going to be inside corner or the long point of our inside corner. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is our first piece. As you can see from left to right, return two inches to long, return to long. All right, next piece. What's going to be on the left? Does anybody know what's on the left? It's a long. Let's go ahead and cut that. Not at 45 degrees. We are going to come back to 44. Go ahead and make that cut. Now, doesn't that look like what's going on in the bedroom right there? Huh? So then over here is going to be our outside corner, correct? So that would mean I need to measure from the long because it's long there and it's shorter here, right? If it was out here, that would be long. We don't even mess with that. Here's long, and we're gonna go over to short. We're gonna measure 17 and three quarters from the long to the short, or inside corner to outside corner. 17 and three quarters. Now for the outside corner, I'm going to move this over past 45 to 46 degrees. I stopped right there because I want you guys to see how close I got to my mark, actually. I left a little bit of meat there because I can always take some more off, but I can't add it back. So sometimes you're not exactly sure because these teeth stick out further than the blade, you think you're on, but you're just a little bit off. So I come before and then I slide it over as needed till I'm right on my mark. So we're there and I need to come over slightly right there. Boom, and that's money. All right, what are we calling that, guys? Does that look right? Long to short, huh? Beautiful, 17 and three quarters, all right? That's going to go over here with my finished pile, and I got one more piece to cut. It is from the short to the return. Here's the piece we're going to use. Now, I know what you're thinking. Z, do you always start cutting on the left side? Because it feels like it'd be easier to cut the return and then cut the short one. Absolutely. I do not want to cut that short and then try to pull off of that. But there are going to be incidents where you have a short on that side and you have a short on this side. And when you do that, let me just go ahead and cut that so you can see what I'm talking about. Well, here's a piece. When it goes to measuring this, there's really nothing to hook onto you. So you're like, uh, you gotta, it's, nah. So what I like to do in a situation like that, and remember, I'm usually pulling from this side, but for this purposes of explaining how to do it on that side, I'm gonna show you this side, cause I already have a shortcut here. I'll just go ahead and hook this right here and then move this over to where that is. See what I'm saying? Now I got something hooked on it, and then I can come back here to where my number is and mark it. And if it's 16, 15, 14, or whatever. But I line this short point up with the edge of my saw here. Now I have something to pull off of. All right, so now we are going to be doing short point to return. I'm going to cut the return first so I have something square to pull off of my tape measure, and then I'll cut that short next. So how do we do that? Swing it over to 45. There's our return. All right, so our number is 29 and a 16th from short to return. Reading it like a book, the short would be on this side. Went ahead and cut my return because it's easier to, to clip on and have something to hold on to. Coming over, 29 and a 16th. 29 and a 16th is right there. So guys, what I want to turn my saw this way and cut that. See, how would that land? 
yeah, that would be the same angle as this. They're not going to go together. It only makes sense to go this way. And not 45, but 46. Okay? All right. Again, I left a little bit of meat so I can just slide it over as needed. Alright guys, there's the last cut in our series of cuts that need to go in there and that's going to go like that, making me an outside corner. How pretty is that, huh? Alright, let's go inside and put these things in. Alright guys, so here's our little piece. It goes right in there. And you can see that came out almost flush because I cut that little dog. Let's go up against that. Here's our second piece. Remember, long, long to short. That goes in right there. And then this piece will go right here. All right, you see I'm a little bit long, but that's okay. I'll go down and, and take care of that. But I want to show you, when you put your 46s together, when you roll it in like that and nail it, you see how that is? Look at that 44 degrees back there. This is a 46, 44. I use a 44 on the inside. 46 on the outside. Let's take a look at what a 45 looks like. Here's a 45 degree, and I cut this on a 45 degree. You see that? There's a little crack in the front there. When I go to push it in and nail it, you can see that you're gonna have to caulk that. And you use the 44 degree. that crack goes away. See? That, I explain why that is the case in my other video. So I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on that. If you guys are interested, I'll leave a link for that video. But anyway, it is my best video and my biggest one, the one with the most uh, views on it. It's very informational and it really will help you out if you have a quarter round installation coming up. All right, moving on. See, as I've shoved this one in, that looks beautiful like that. I'm gonna go ahead and nail that so you guys can see what I'm talking about. You wanna try to put your nails in this way, especially if you haven't left yourself that big of an expansion gap. You surely don't wanna shoot your nails down through the floor. But if you leave an expansion gap there, about a quarter of an inch, three sixteenths, you can not shoot down at an angle if your nails just aren't reaching the studs. I'm using two inch nails going through three quarters of an inch plus about a half inch, so that's an inch and a quarter. Then I'm going through a half inch of drywall. That's an inch and three quarters. So I'm only going a quarter of an inch into the studs. So, uh, it's better than nothing. It may be, see how that one didn't stick? So in that case, that's what I would want to go down through the floor. You see it stay. All right, cool. This one just a small one on there. Boom, son. All right, guys, let's take a look at this finished product here. There's going to be your inside corner, and there is your outside corner. So, 46 and 44 returns. Now all I gotta do is coke that top line and fill in them holes. All right, guys, that's gonna do for this one. I hope that we finally got this situation sorted out. Where do I start my measurement? Where do I stop my measurement? Hopefully I got it where you guys can understand it. If you guys enjoyed today's presentation, help me out by smashing that like button and that'll put this video out to other people who had the same issue that you had and maybe we can help them out. And also if you like seeing videos like this, it's real easy to go on down and hit the subscribe button, but make sure you turn on notifications so they'll let you know when I put those videos out. And then you'll be part of the DIY nation, this big family of do-it-yourselfers. All right, guys, that's all I have for this one, and I hope to see you on the next one. And until next time, take care and stay safe.
Peace.